Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Um, so today I will be talking about Yakuza 5, which I just finished yesterday. Um, so, so far my entire, um, my experience with the series has basically been I played 0, Kiwami, Kiwami 2, uh, 3 and 4 remastered, and now 5 remastered. Uh, so I've just been going through the entire series. So yeah, today I'm just talking about Yakuza 5. Um, so, usually there's like a thing or two that I kind of know about the game beforehand. Um, but this one, kind of like Yakuza 4, I didn't really know much about it at all. Um, from what I've heard, I've seen like, you know, Yakuza takes on each game can differ. But from what I've kind of seen generally, this one is liked. So I went into it thinking that I was going to like it. But other than that, pretty much... pretty. I went in completely blind, not knowing, you know, what was going to happen at all. Um, so the basic overview of the plot, just, I don't want to get too far into it, but just how, it, like, the basic setup for it. Um, so Kiryu, um, he has to don a new identity so that Haruka can fulfill her dream of, um, being an idol. Um, so he becomes a taxi driver, um, in a different town, so he can still send some of his money back to the orphanage in Okinawa. Um, but while he's there, he gets approached by Daigo, who asks him for help, but he basically just says like he'll have to help himself because he doesn't want to get dragged into that again. And then that basically happens anyway, he just gets dragged into it. But yeah, and but not only them, but also uh, four more people get dragged into this, which is um, Saijima, returning character from Yakuza 4, Akiyama, returning character from Yakuza 4, um, Shinada, who is a brand new character, and for the very first time, Haruka is now a character that you can play as. But yeah, so now that I've kind of given like the overall like um, plot or setup for the plot, uh, just getting into like the things I liked and didn't like. I realized this in my past few videos when I was just kind of going through and editing them that um, I don't really go over uh, the gameplay aspect as much for these Yakuza videos just because um, they're all very similar and just have like little tweaks in between most of them. So I thought like I just, you know, put in like basically like a little thing for at each of them just explaining it in case this is like someone's first vi Yakuza video that they're watching of mine. Um, but basically it's... For main gameplay, which I'm considering just to be combat, because of course there's other things like minigames, but um, for main combat, um, it's very traditional for an action RPG where you have, you know, like you chain together weak attacks into strong attacks, but what makes Yakuza very fun, and that's basically the best word I can think of it, uh, that makes it very fun and entertaining is that you can additionally do things known as heat attacks, so once you've, you know, done enough damage and you've built up, like, what is essentially just, like, your meter, um, and when the, when you put the enemy in a certain circumstance, um, you could do these huge devastating attacks. So, like, for instance, like, say, uh, he got knocked onto the ground, um, by a strong attack. Well, then you can follow that up with a heat attack that basically just, like, kicks him in the face, uh, and it's usually pretty brutal, but at the same time, they can also be pretty goofy, um, so, like, maybe say, like, you have, like, nails in your hand or something, you will, like, in Yakuza 0 or Kiwami, you will, like, literally, like, shove them in the person's mouth, and that would be, like, the heat attack that does a ton of damage. So, it, it goes from being, like, brutal, kind of serious to, like, brutal, but, like, silly. So, I think that's kind of, like, what makes the, uh, combat really appealing, is not only that fact that, like, it does flow very nice, but there's, like, an aspect of it that's kind of, like, silly at the same time that, like, always keeps it kind of fresh. Just seeing, like, okay, well, you do have, like, your basic combos with your weak attacks uh, linking into strong attacks, but how am I going to follow this up into a, a really cool heat attack? Uh, but other than that, going back to how I usually do my videos. So, first thing that I did, like, much like the other <clears throat> two remastered games, it runs very well. Uh, especially since I'm running it on PS5, so, um, you know, 1440p resolution, 60 frames a second, great stuff. 
Um, I don't need to really dwell too much on that since I've already kind of talked about that in the previous two videos about how, how well it does run. Um, the next thing I would say, the story overall for this one, I thought it was pretty good. Um, but you know, of course, I don't really like getting too deep into the story in case there's anyone watching this that hasn't played it but still wants to try it out. I don't want to get too far into that, but I'll just say overall, I, I really did enjoy the story. Um, and not just the story, but also like the characters themselves. So, you know, we've had always had a uh, Kiryu is always a protagonist. Uh, but, you know, returning characters like Saejima and Akiyama, who I kind of feel like I like them more in this one, cause since, they've, you know, you've had the time to kind of know them since Yakuza 4. Um, I think they were great. And, of course, Haruko has been around since Yakuza 1, but uh, never as, like, a playable character, which is cool. So you get to see Haruko in kind of a new light because of that. Um, and now, uh, Shinada, who was the guy in the final chapter, but... Um, at first, I thought I wasn't going to like him, but eventually he grew on me, and I can kind of say that I do like him now, but at first, you know, he just kind of came off as not kind of the character I thought I was really going to enjoy a lot, but later I did not end up thinking that he was pretty good. Um, so yeah, the combat itself, much like a lot of Yakuza games, is still really nice and satisfying, um, but I'd say it's similar to Yakuza 4, but definitely better. Um, because you have, like, a lot more heat actions, which are good. Um, and also they fixed how Akiyama does his play style. So in the original, or at least in, not in the original, but in Yakuza 4, um, him and Tanimura were just kind of, like, very combo-heavy characters. Uh, but the thing was, um, he, he it just didn't work very well, and Tanimura's was, like, a lot more fun to play as. But now, in Yakuza 5, they fixed it so much that, like, it... I would have trouble going back to Yakuza 4, because now he just, like, uses his legs so much to, like, kick people in the air and then combo them in the air. He, he looks like he's Sanji. Um, it's crazy. But, yeah. Um, for the most part, the combat was really good. I'll talk about the one thing I had a little, um, issue with later. But, yeah, they, they fixed Akiyama, who I already really thought was a great character, but now his combat was fixed, and I, I think that's amazing. And, of course... It's not Yakuza if there isn't, like, 20 different minigames inside. So you got, you know, your staples, like, um, bowling, darts, pool. And then you have new stuff like ramen making and improv comedy. The soundtrack for this game is just really good. Uh, I'm playing it all throughout this video, but just do yourself a favor and look some up. They're all really, really good. That's enough said about that, moving on. I think overall, like, the the villain for Yakuza 5, who I'm not going to name, but, um, I thought he was good, but definitely better than Yakuza 4, where it, I just did not, didn't click with me at all, but, um, I do think the villain was decently well, but, you know, of course not quite up there with, um, Yakuza 3, or 1, or 2, but, I, I mean, I still liked the villain a decent amount, and I'm happy with that. Um, I think, much like Yakuza 4, the way how they present the story where you play as one character for four chapters, and then you switch to the next, and then to the next, and to the next, and then you kind of connect the dots from how these four different characters are being, like, dragged into the situation. I thought that was a good way to do it again. Uh, I didn't think it worked to its detriment at all, and I did think it was really interesting to see, like, how Kiryu, who is now in one lo a new location, um, Fukuoka, is getting dragged into something that's also in Tokyo and um, all the other places where people are at. Um, but yeah. Um, but now, um, what's it? Uh, it's not sub side stories. So. Much like Yakuza 0, um, side stories are back, so now each character has their own, like, special, like, it, it's more than a minigame, but it's not, you know, it's, like, between a minigame and, like, that real game, but they each have, like, their own well-developed, um, like, things specifically for them, so now, uh, Kiryu, he can drive taxis, and, like, there's also a little soul subplot of, um, him driving taxis, and then Saejima, 
uh, has like a hunting game where he's in the woods and he has to hunt down this giant bear. Um, Akiyama helps Haruka with her idol career by doing manager things. And, you know, Haruka's the one dancing and singing and doing the handshaking and the comedy and the interviews and everything. Um, and then Tanimura um, has this whole baseball subplot where he has to, like, help. Or he, not really help, but he has to, like, show his old friends, like, that he um, isn't a bad person, basically, by playing baseball against them. At first, I thought that one wasn't going to be very good, but I actually really did like it. Uh, but yeah, I think they're they're all really good and worth doing. But uh, aside from side stories, the sub stories themselves for each character I think are are all really good. Um, you know, like in Yakuza Four, I felt like a lot of them were either hit or miss, and most of them were miss. Um, but in this one, I, I, I'm glad to say that the majority of them I actually think are pretty good. So um, that that's great with me. I hope they continue that. Um, and yeah, other than that, I don't know if I've just not been paying attention for these last ones, but I feel like there's actually like a very um, tangible message for the players, which is to, you know, follow your dreams no matter what. I don't really think there's like a whole lot of me like messages just meant specifically for the player and the other ones, but this one is very obvious uh, in this game, and I'm I'm all for having messages for the players in a game. Uh, but that's that's it for things I liked. Um, for things I don't like so much, um, kind of like the other two. I think the graphics. I feel like since I started with Yakuza Zero, which has some really good graphics, going back was just kind of hard. But it's like a it's not quite as bad, I would say, as three and four, which use the same engine. Since now they have the five engine, so it's like a mix of like not as good as Yakuza Zero or Kiwami, but it's you know better than three and four. But even though it's better, it's still noticeable at times that you know this is just a PS3 game. So yeah, I mean, graphics are still not super great, which could, you know, distract a little bit, even though I'm not a super huge graphics snob or anything like that, but I just thought it was something noteworthy. Um, another thing that I kind of have a bone to pick with is, um, the ending itself isn't very conclusive at all, actually. Um, so basically, Kiryu has his, his ending is kind of conclusive, but then for, like, a lot of other people, like Akiyama and Saijima, they don't really have, like, an ending thing with them it's just kind of like okay the final battle is over and you don't really get to see what happens next even after the credits um tony Moore did have his own little you know ending with the phone call which i thought was nice but um don't want to go super deep into like what their endings are in case there are someone that um hasn't watched it yet or played it i mean um but yeah uh, another thing I didn't really like all that much is Haruka's segment in general. So half of the third chapter, or the third saga of the game, is Haruka, and then the other half you play is Akiyama. So the, the Haruka segment, I thought it was alright at first, but it does get kind of tedious, because it's basically just like the same rhythm minigame over and over. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I'm happy that they decided to do just half of a saga instead of like the whole thing, or else I would have gotten very tired of it. Uh, very quickly um and also on that note since uh akiyama and haruka share a saga akiyama himself does not have his own like side story game like everyone else does so his is just kind of wrapped into haruka's idol career management uh which i was kind of sad that he didn't get his own thing maybe relating to like his money lending business or anything like that uh even though some of the sub stories cover a couple of those instances but um the final you know thing i kind of didn't like is the new character shinada his combat system is just not very fun at all um because he's he's like a slow character but that does really well with weapons um and while i'm i'm fine with slow characters is i think saijima is good he's a slow character but he hits like a truck and you can just launch people into the air with him but the thing with Shinada is he just, like, tackles people onto walls and then uses heat attacks. 
uh, but a lot of his heat attacks are like really slow so i feel like it, i just don't want to use them just because it i'd be quicker just finishing them off with um a strong attack rather than a heat attack because it just takes so long but um eventually you will get weapons that actually um are like quicker like after you complete the baseball sub story which i did like at the very last thing for his entire saga you get the unbreakable sword um which is very useful but i got it at the very end so i went through his entire saga without having like the best thing for combat for him also another thing about this game that um i don't really like that much i kind of talked about this previously how they fixed this issue in yakuza 4 but they brought the issue back in yakuza 5 is with uh, how you upgrade like your abilities um instead of being like a normal skill tree it goes back to the way it was in 3 where um you can only see like what is coming up like immediately next for like each of the four categories of upgrading and you can't see anything beyond that so if there's like one thing in particular you're looking for uh, you don't know like when exactly you're gonna get it, so that can be kind of frustrating at times when I was trying to find something particular like a regard, uh, which is like basically essential for like combat in this game for like not getting hit by big attacks, especially for bosses. But that was kind of an annoying thing I thought I should just mention. But yeah, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much everything I have to say that I didn't really like about the game. So I mean. Overall, if I had to, like, give the game a rating, um, I would give it a 6 out of 7. Because I, I think it's not quite as good as, um, Zero, Kiwami 1, and Kiwami 2, but it's definitely better than Yakuza 4, and definitely better than 3. Um, so I'm gonna insert that new tier list on the screen right now. Um... I'm kind of happy that they decided to like you know, branch out with like new locations for each character, but um, they also just felt very linear and not nearly as complicated and iconic as Kamurocho or um, Sotenbori. But yeah, I'm looking forward to playing Yakuza 6 sometime soon, so look out for that whenever I decide to do it. But yeah, let me know what y'all thought in the comments below. I'll be eager to hear what y'all think, but thanks for watching. See you later.